the winning, winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. presents. <laughs> If you see this face, no, Steve Smith, I did not just score. You are in the lab room. Thank you for joining me on this glorious Tuesday afternoon. I am your host, Lou, and much to get to today. Let's start with the Monday night tilt between the Denver Broncos and the Atlanta Falcons. And right from the get-go, the Atlanta Falcons made it their mission to make sure that they contained Peyton Manning and didn't allow him to get off as he did a week ago. And I thought that the play calling for the Broncos, and again, anytime you're talking about Peyton Manning, you don't know if he went to the line of scrimmage and changed the play call because he thought he saw something in the defense or if that was the actual play that was called uh, from the coordinator. Whatever the case, I thought that the Broncos came out this week and they really tried to push the ball down the field. And I thought that they should have, especially this being Peyton Manning's first start on the road, I thought they needed to come out, run the football, uh, go with the short passing game early on, even if they had to punt, settle Peyton down, get him a couple of short completions, and, and let him see receivers catch the football, let him get comfortable and get into a rhythm, and then you start pushing the ball down the field. They came out right away and tried to push the ball down the field, and they paid for it. You know, third play from scrimmage, interception, down to about the four-yard line, and the Falcons punch it in three plays later, and really the Falcons never really looked back from that point on. But the Denver Broncos didn't help their case at all, especially Peyton Manning. As he continued his abysmal start, second possession, he throws another interception, this time resulting in a field goal for the Atlanta Falcons. And just like that, the Broncos found themselves in a hole. And again, this team has not had that much time together. This team has no continuity. And so you can see it on, a, on some of those interceptions. I think Peyton Manning thought that his receiver was going to do one thing, they did another thing, or he thought he saw something in the defense and it wasn't what he thought it was. And you can see that there's still some timing issues. There's still some route running issues between Peyton Manning and his receivers. He's thinking they're going to do one thing. They do something else. It results in an interception. And so they still have a ways to go to gel and to mesh together and become the offense that they want to, to put out on the field week in and week out. And so this Broncos team has a ways to go, and I think it was evident on Monday night. And if you're going to have a game like this, you want it to be early in the season, get it out of the way, learn from it. And these are teachable moments for the Broncos. They're going to see this on film, and they're going to make adjustments. But in this game itself, the Broncos struggle uh, to make, adjustments against the Falcons defense. They were moving around at the line of scrimmage and not showing what they were going to do, whether they were going to blitz, drop into coverage, what coverage it was. And I think Payne Manning, uh, like I said, he saw things with his eyes and his mind told him he could get the football there. But I don't know if his body was ready to respond to what his mind and his eyes saw. And so he made mistakes and the Falcons Credit to them. They made him pay for those mistakes. And they got turnovers. They got three interceptions from Peyton Manning in the first half. After the second interception, Peyton started to put together a nice, solid drive. He still threw another interception. This one, not sure if this was all his fault as the first two were. Uh, this one might have been more the fault of Eric Decker. I think Peyton was expecting him to cross that safety space or that corner space, excuse me. And he didn't. He, I think he went behind the corner slightly, allowing the corner to cut in front of him and make a play on the football. And, and I think these are things that they'll work on, they'll get better at. But again, this is where you see uh, the continuity between receiver and quarterback and not being 
quite in unison yet because of the short amount of time they've had together. This is going to be a process for Peyton Manning with this new Denver Broncos uh, team. And so if you were a, Bro a Broncos fan and you were getting a little bit uh, ahead of yourself thinking that this team was going to be a juggernaut, you need to pump your brakes a little bit and realize that just like everyone else, Peyton Manning has to come back and assimilate himself to the league and to this Denver Broncos team. And it's going to take a while. He's only two games back from the neck injury. And so it's going to take time before he is the Peyton Manning that we used to see in Indianapolis. However, take nothing away from the Atlanta Falcons. They went out. They were the more aggressive football team. They made plays when they were there to be made. And they took it to this Denver Broncos uh, football team. You know, they made mistakes, did the Broncos, and the Falcons took advantage of them, made them pay for them, put points on the scoreboard, and, and made uh, this Denver Broncos team have to come from behind to beat them. And I knew, watching this game, I never thought that the Broncos were out of this game because I said, they have Peyton Manning at quarterback. And that counts for something. That means you have a shot. And they kept putting the graphic up during the Monday night telecast about, you know, Peyton Manning coming back on Monday night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being down three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. They kept showing that graphic and I kept saying to myself, it could happen, but I didn't think it was going to happen because this Atlanta Falcons team is just too good to allow Peyton Manning to come back. I thought they took their foot off of the gas uh, in the second half, allowed this Denver Broncos team to get back into the football game, and I knew they would. But, again, I didn't think they would have enough. It was going to take a lot out of them to try to make that comeback, and it just wasn't enough as that offense with Roddy White, with Julio Jones, with Tony Gonzalez. It's just too much to overcome. They're going to continue to get first downs, to eat up the clock. I thought they were being a little bit too conscientious of the clock and trying to run that down instead of just continuing to push the ball down the field because they were getting chunks against this Denver Broncos defense, especially in that secondary. They were getting chunks, but I thought that they were looking more so to just play the clock instead of playing the Denver Broncos. Nonetheless, they were able to hang on for the victory in this game. I thought Matt Ryan looked exceptionally well, as he did in the first week. He didn't make... Uh, too many mistakes. Roddy White, Julio Jones looked great. Uh, Tony Gonzalez, as always, in midseason form. And I thought that the, the Falcons offense really carried them. This defense uh, played great football in the first quarter, turned Peyton Manning over uh, three times, also forced a fumble. They, they were really playing uh, good football as a defense in that first half. I think that the defense started to relax, however, in the second half as they felt like they had a little cushion. And I think they allowed the, the Broncos to get back into this game. But again, the lead that they built early on from the turnovers and mistakes that the Broncos made was just too much for the Broncos to overcome. And then the Falcons offense put more points on the board early in the second half to kind of cement the victory and make it that much harder for the Broncos to come back. And so, uh, the, of course, they made a late game charge, but I don't think these Falcons ever felt in danger of losing this football game. Uh, they came out aggressive early on, set the tone in this game, and took a early lead and really never looked back. And so the Falcons won this game 27-21, to taking their record to 2-0, and dropping the Denver Broncos to 1-1. and And if you're a Broncos fan, there's no worries. This is a, a good Atlanta Falcons football team that you lost to on the road in a tough environment to play in. Peyton Manning's second game back uh, from the neck surgeries. And so there's a long way to go. There's a long season. And there's nothing to really uh, hold your head down about. These Broncos are going to be fine this year. Again, Peyton Manning needs time to continue to uh, progress in his uh, recovery as well as getting to know his receivers and knowing where each other is going to be on the football field and knowing where to place the football to get. I think right now he only trusts uh, Jacob Tammy and Brandon Stokely. And he, he needs to get 
that same rapport with uh, Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker because those two are the ones who are going to make significant plays for you. Brandon Stokely is going to catch uh, a seven-yard uh, Z out on third and five and get the first down and move the sticks as he did on Monday night uh, on a fabulous catch uh, on an out route on a third down. That is just an excellent catch. Brandon Stokely can still get it done. However, he's not going to be the one to catch a 47-yard touchdown pass. That Those uh, honors are going to go to Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker. And so Peyton Manning needs to be on the same page with these guys moving forward. And so I think they'll work towards that. There'll be a lot of extra work going on after practice is over to get these guys on the same page. And you'll see uh, the maturation and development of their relationships moving forward, getting better. So that win ran my record to nine and seven this week. And it was a tough week for me. That, that one was a tough one to stomach because I'm better than 9-7. And, and it was a rough week for a lot of people picking games. The best that I heard uh, was 11-5. and five. Someone was 11-5 and five that I saw. I mean, because let, let's be frank here. How many people had the Cardinals beating the Patriots? How many people had the Rams beating the Redskins? How many people had, and, and some people probably had the Seahawks beating the Cowboys. I'll give you that one, but many people probably didn't have the, the Seahawks beating the Cowboys. How many people had the Eagles beating the Ravens? That one probably was 50-50. If you had the, the Ravens, you lost, as I did. If you had the Eagles, I, I mean, it could go both ways. Um, so you look at those games. Monday night was a toss-up. If, if you thought that Peyton Manning was ready to go on the road and get one, you might have picked the Broncos and lost that game. I didn't. I thought that uh, it was going to be a tough environment for him. And the, the Falcons don't lose often at home in the Georgia Dome, and I thought they were going to go out and get it done, and they did. And you also look at the Indianapolis and Minnesota game. That's a 50-50 toss-up. Uh, usually, I, I go with the home team. I went against my own principles. I paid for it. That's what I get for not trusting in, in my system. I said when it's a 50-50 toss-up, two teams that are evenly match, you go with the home team. I went against my principles. It bit me in the butt. Uh, you look at the same thing with Kansas City and Buffalo. I thought this was a game against two evenly uh, matched teams. I was wrong. Kansas City looks like a team trying to find themselves right now instead of a team that's looking to uh, build upon what they've done the last two seasons and, and be better and be a team competing for a championship in, within that division. They look like a team that's just trying to find themselves and stay out of the bottom of that division. And so uh, I lost that game. I went with the Chiefs on the road and Buffalo um, gave them a sound thrashing as my one of my professors used to say in school, they had a sound thrashing at the hands of the Buffalo Bills. I lost that game. And so you could easily have lost five or six games this week, but seven is way too many. I went out on a limb too many times. You know, again, two evenly te matched teams between the Dolphins and the Oakland Raiders. I'm thinking, hey, rookie quarterback in Miami with Tannehill. Raiders look solid on defense. They're going to stop the run as they did against the Chargers, force Tannehill to beat them, force him into some mistakes, win the ball game close. Absolutely, flat out, dead wrong. Uh, Tannehill looked very solid, not making any mistakes and repeatedly uh, finding Brian Hartline wide open in that Raiders secondary. And they, they torched the Raiders. And I was wrong on that one. Again, two teams that are evenly matched, you go with the home team. I went against my principles. I paid the price again. And so I just have to be more disciplined. I have rules. I need to follow them. And, and looking at these teams now, I'm starting to get a sense of who's who. It's still early in the season. And so this NFL, as I've said, is, is a fluid league, meaning it's week to week. You don't know who's going to do what from in any given week. I mean, Looking at it right now, the Arizona Cardinals are 2-0. Their next game is against the Eagles. Do you think they're going to beat the Philadelphia Eagles? Probably not. But don't kid yourself for one second thinking that they can't beat these, this, these Eagles. They beat the Eagles in Philadelphia last year. This game is in Arizona, a tough place to play. They could easily be 3-0 after this football game. But that's, again, a toss-up. You could go with the Cardinals. You can go with the Eagles. Either way, that's a tough game to pick. 
But really quick, going back to week two, who saw Carolina going uh, against the New Orleans Saints and winning that football game? I know I didn't. I thought that Drew Brees, he was frustrated. I could hear it in his voice. I, I could read the quotes. I could read between the lines. I thought he was going to come out and annihilate this Carolina Panthers defense. I was wrong. They got the best of him, and they had an excellent game plan, and they ran it to perfection, and they got the W. Again, another loss for me. And so, look, at the end of the day, I know the mistakes that I made, and it cost me dearly this week because I would have I would have gladly taken 10 and 6, 11 and 5 this week, although that's not anywhere close to what I expect out of myself. This week was so wacky that I would have took that gladly, but 9 and 7, look, I, I made it over 500, so I'm not going to complain here. And when that dust settles and it clears, I'm going to be on top. I know, I know I'm going to get this thing heading in the right direction here shortly. But again, week two was another rough week for me. After going 11 and 5 the first week, I came back with a, a 9 and 7 performance. And so right now, I'm not liking what, what I'm seeing from my picks. I got to be better. I will be better. And <laughs> I don't know if I guaranteed it last week, but I'm guaranteeing it this week. And if you keep guaranteeing stuff, your guarantees start to not mean anything. So I don't know if I guaranteed it last week, but I guarantee it this week. I am going to be great. And, and by great, I define myself having three or, or less losses. I'm going to be great this week. And I'm going to find a way to make smart decisions with my picks. And I'm going to stick to my principles. And I'm going to get the job done this week because I can't have another week like I did last week. Um, I was so disgusted with myself after looking at the way these games ended up and the amount of losses I had. That's so unlike myself. And so I'm going to be better this week. So that's going to be a touchdown for this episode. Go ahead and throw it up. And I just want to tack on this quick extra point. Now, if you've been following the news today, uh, you've heard of the passing of the great Steve Sable of NFL Films. And it just, it really hurt my heart to, to find out that he finally lost his battle with brain cancer. I knew he had been battling for a while. You started to see his body change and um, it, it still didn't make it any easier to take, even though you knew he was battling. Um, he's such a great mind in the world of sports, primarily football. He did so much to revolutionize the game of football and the way we watch it. And I, I couldn't really grasp the fact that he was going to no longer be here to continue to bring us the best in football and what happens behind the scenes and what happens between the white lines. He's been a fixture in the NFL for so long. And although I didn't know him, I knew, I knew his work. And I can tell you this, that without Steve Sable, Ed Sable, and, and that family bringing us NFL films and bringing us the game of football so eloquently, uh, I don't know if a quarter of the NFL fans would be fans right now. And I really mean that. I think that at least a fourth of all NFL fans are fans because of the work that NFL Films and Steve Sable and Ed Sable have done over the years. His Hall of Fame father kind of started and pioneered NFL Films and Steve took over and he's been brilliant. And I really, it really hurt my heart to find out that, that he had finally passed away. He was a true pioneer of the game of football in terms of bringing that to your home on your television set and making you feel like you were a part of the game, bringing you inside access to not just the players and coaches, but, you know, all the things that went on the field, the interaction with the players and the referees and, you know, even with the cameramen when they would be stretching. I mean, just little things that you probably take for granted. And these guys brought it to you and they brought it to you in such a way that it made you feel a part of the game. And so um, his legacy will, will never die. And I'm hoping that there's someone left 
to take over this NFL films empire because what Steve Sable has built, let no one put asunder. I, I think that they've built NFL films into a giant empire that has withstood the test of time. And I hope someone is there to continue the lineage of NFL films and continue to bring it to our living rooms as Steve Sable did for so many years. Again, his legacy will never die. His work will not go in vain. We will always remember Steve Sable for what he's done for the game of football. And so I think I speak for everyone when I say uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thanks for all the memories. Thanks for all that you've done for this game. And thanks for making us fans of the greatest game uh, on earth. Thanks. Gone but never forgotten. Rest in peace, Steve Sable. Gone at the age of 69. And that's going to do it for this episode of In the Lab Room. I thank you for joining me. Hit me up in, in the inbox at inthelabroom at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook. Like me on Facebook. I'm on Twitter at In the Lab Room. That's the Twitter handle. Um, I'll be back. Also, I want to remind you that the second installment of the Warpath Warrior uh, will be on later today. Check that out as well. And uh, I thank you for joining me. And I will see you same time, same place tomorrow. Have a good one.